Come on, say it with me. March Madness, because we're making the devil mad in March. I'm sorry if that's cheesy, but I just think that we need to get ready for an epic Easter. I know that Easter is one of the biggest days, uh, not, not just in human history, okay, but also for people to come to church. And so, you know, sharing our faith in these next few weeks is going to be I believe a pivotal moment for so many of you. And I'm challenging your life group leader who is watching this right now uh, to go first. But I wanna teach you how to share your testimony and in the next three weeks, I want you to upload your text, uh, testimony, post it on Instagram or Facebook and tag Freedom Church. And we wanna do this whole campaign where we are just putting what God has done in our lives online. And some of you are like, oh my gosh, I could never do that. Listen, pray about it. Ask God how he wants you to respond to this. But sharing our faith is part of being a follower of Jesus. He has commanded this in the Great Commission to go into the world. And I know that there are people in your life that need to hear what God has done in your life. So let's, let's respond to how good he is by sharing with the world this message of hope, where our hope comes from. And I love this example of David. I know this is Old Testament, but this is so rad. When Goliath is um, picking a fight with Israel, and for 40 days, he has been marching back and forth, like taunting the, you know, the armies of Israel. And Saul, the king, is supposed to go fight, but he's scared. And there's nobody who's willing to fight Goliath on behalf. And, and then there's David. And David's like, come on, put me in. You know, I'll, I'll take this guy out. And, and he gives this epic speech. He says, he says, but David said to Saul, your servant has been keeping his father's sheep. And I just think that that moment, <laughs> Saul probably laughed like, You've been keeping your father's sheep. Wow, I bet you're a warrior. When a lion or a bear came and carried off a sheep from the flock, I went after it, I struck it, and I rescued the sheep from its mouth. Okay, now we're talking. When it turned on me, I seized it by its hair, I struck it, I killed it, and your servant has killed both the lion and the bear and this uncircumcised Philistine. That's a little personal. This uncircumcised Philistine will, 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 will be like one of them because he's defied the armies of the living God. And the Lord who rescued me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear will rescue me from the hand of this Philistine. He's like, I know who my God is and, and, and the same God that did this in my life can do this. He rescued me from this bear, so he's gonna take care of us. He rescued me from this lion, so he's gonna do this. He was there for me then, so he's gonna be there for me now. That, that's, a, that's a testimony. His testimony compelled Saul to let him fight on behalf of the whole nation. You know what would have happened if David would have lost? If David would have lost to Goliath, you know what would have happened? The men of Israel, uh, the, the, the armies, they would have been captured. The kids would have been sold into slavery. The women would have been drugged back to the camp. Saul was letting David fight on behalf of his entire army. And it wasn't because he was tall. He says, you're short. And he goes, he goes, you're not even a trained soldier. That's what he says in the verse before this. But his testimony was so powerful that it compelled Saul to do it. His testimony was, this is who my God is. And this is what he's done for me. And because he's done this in my life, I can tell you, you can't argue with this. This is the God who rescued me. I, if God can do it for me then, He can do it for me now. And that's what a testimony is. It's saying, this is what God has done for me, and let me tell you what He can do for you. If He can do it for me, He can do it for you. And so that's my, my encouragement. I want you to take out a piece of paper in your life group. I want you to draw that roller coaster that we did this weekend. I want you to draw a line across the middle. I want you to go around your Zoom or your backyard or your living room. And I want you to talk about some of the high moments. And then I want you to talk about some of the low moments. And then I want you to talk about the before and after story, right? Who God has been to you and what you've learned about God. Not the lesson that you learned about life, but who has God been to you in your lowest moments and now you trust him. I wanna, if he could do it for me, he could do it for you, testimony. Take your test, make it a testimony. Take your mess, make it a message. And when you practice it a few times, I want you to grab that selfie video and I want you to record a video to put online, tag Freedom Church, and the very end of that video should sound like this. And if he could do it for me, he could do it for you. You pick a moment, finances, sickness, a tough breakup, um, you know, a time when you were waiting on God and He finally came through. Pick any of those low moments, grief or anxiety or any of those low moments and say, if God can do it for me, He can do it for you. Keep it short, keep it uncomplicated, 
keep it about God and end with, if he can do it for me, he can do it for you. That's your challenge for March Madness. Let's fill up the internet with all these great stories, glorifying God. Let's bring worship to his name because the truth is, is that he deserves to be worshiped with your story. That testimony doesn't even belong to you. That belongs to him. It belongs to him because he deserves all the glory. Amen.